decals, uh, figureheads. So if you think about, you know, those those old na- naval boats where they have like the half naked woman mermaid on the front of their boat. Yes. Those are figureheads. So each ship may have a customized selection of figureheads. And also, um, if you walk around the ships, you may notice some interesting items on the floor, like potted plants. I mean, that's kind of an inside joke for us here in the office, but. Um, we're also looking into more of like ship deco, maybe even changing your helm or something like that. Oh, um, very cool, very cool. Yeah, so I mean, these are all ideas that I think we can we can pull off without, um, you know, destroying your computer. Sounds great. Um, yeah, no, I'm really excited. Like for character customization, that's great. The die system is going to be great. Um, ship customization, that's just that's amazing. That's like a whole yeah. other thing. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're we're still a little ways um, from actually getting that in the game, but it's definitely on the list of things to do, and we are working on it. For All sure. right. Um, the next one, Nuclear Donut asks. This is a repeat of last week, but I feel it's worth mentioning again. Any chance of real life merch, T-shirts, hats, stuffed pyramidians? Yes. Um, um, I mean, after we get Kickstarter stuff fulfilled, we can definitely start thinking about doing more of that again. I mean, for a long while, um, before we did the new Adventure Mode Kickstarter, we were selling a lot of things, but since then, we've taken that part of the store down. Yeah, and we discussed this last week as well. It was a really popular idea with the stuffed Pyramidians or stuffed airships. Um, Everybody at Muse seems to think it's a good idea. It may not be a practical idea right now, but in the future, that's definitely something that we could look forward to. Oh, it's cuddly rambling. Ramming. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Not gonna necessarily explode from a stuffed pyramidian, but that, yeah, I like that. Um, okay, we got another donut person, pink sprinkled donut this time. asks, "What about the possibility?" Oh no, wait. Yeah, wait, that's another wait. ship customization one. The next uh, real question is from Deluxe Bob, and he's asking if that's the game was, was made on thirty-five thousand dollars, which I'm. I think he's talking about the first Kickstarter. No. Oh uh, no, it's not. Actually, has another really good question uh, from Deluxe Fob again. When, when slash where can we pre-order Adventure Mode? Oh, uh, guns of Icarus dot com slash store. Oh, yeah. Uh, no matter how we do Adventure Mode, you'll basically get everything that comes out because it's a season pass to all the DLC for the game. Yep. Sweet. Uh, will that be on Steam eventually as well? Yep. Yep. Excellent. Um, I suppose we don't have a... Or wait, we can pre-order that right now, can't we? Yeah, yeah you can. From the store. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, everybody go there right now and pre-order Adventure <laughs> Mode. It is up and ready. <laughs> I feel like everybody who's listening probably already pre-ordered. I, no, this is news to me. I didn't even... I was waiting for like news from you guys. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, we, we can assume that maybe like at least one other person is as stunned as, as I am. <laughs> Alright, um, then uh, we have Echoes asking, he just wants to make sure since the new heavy gun will eventually be made, we'll be made sure it's self-sufficient so it doesn't end up like the heavy flak. Oh, man. Well, the heavy flak is going to is undergoing many, many changes this coming patch. So yeah, sure. The, the next gun will be self-sufficient like any other gun, I suppose. I mean, you always need to pair up guns and, and that's how the balance is designed in the game. But sure. Yeah, no, I'm kind of confused by where he says doesn't end up like the heavy flak. Well, um, I, I mean, like every gun in the game is, there, like, there's no self-sufficient guns in the game. Yeah, really. I don't know. Um, I think what he may be referring to is that the heavy flak is a very niche gun. It is, ha- it is very hard to use. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. So I did. I I gave it some just, you know, I gave it some good loving, and it should be. I don't know. Maybe it'll be OP <laughs> during testing this week. I have no idea, but hopefully it's okay now. See, I'm not going to say what popped into my head when you said I'm going to give that gun some lovin'. It's not appropriate no, it's, for this stream. It's a bit PG on the stream. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Speaking right, of P- um, PG, Bunghole Blast has a question here. <laughs> <laughs> have you considered oh, expanding God. the amount of people per ship for a bigger, more intense battle experience? Uh, yeah, we've yeah. been playing around with the idea, especially with co-op mode. Um, we don't know where we're going to head with that just yet, but for the plan is to work with what we've got now, and uh, we're going to we're gonna at least experiment. You know, li- quite literally, um, like, 
for each ship, there's like a little value that I can enter in for how many crew. All of them are set to four right now. It'll just break our UI, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, good. apparently I dropped that bomb uh, two weeks ago, was it? <laughs> Nobody, everybody was stunned. Yeah, and I now, was stunned. Now, yeah, now Eric's rolling with it. Well, now that I've been, I've been brought up to speed, I'm okay now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Mark Abrams asks, will the adventure mode be available on PS4? If yes, will it be cross-platform? We discussed this before, but I think we should go over it again. Uh, adventure mode? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there should be nothing to prevent us. Well, like, once we have a new DLC or a new build, a new update. This shouldn't be. Oh, we should be able to uh, port it to different builds. Um, I mean, that's the whole idea of using Unity. Um, obviously, there are some issues that we need to work out uh, to essentially bring the game to PS4 to begin with, such as you know voice, how we handle voice chat, and stuff like that. I mean, without getting the dev kit and the Unity console license, we don't know for sure yet. But I mean, that would be the, the, the goal. All right. And then this is an interesting question that I see uh, uh, t from Terror Squiddy. How ba balanced do you feel the game is right now? Like, just, I guess, grabbing your feel on it. Um, you know, Eric. I feel it's pretty, it's, it's, it's in a very workable state right now. As far as professionally, as a designer, I think it's pretty good. As a player, I think... It's also not bad, but of course there's some place where it could need some work, and this is why this next patch is really going to be really crucial. Um, as far, I think, where this question might lead is, specifically, is this game balanced for 1v1? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, a squid versus a galleon? That squid will probably die. Um, if you think about, and this is something that I've been telling people at PAX, um, our ships are balanced in the way that, if you think about Team Fortress classes, um, they're all designed asymmetric. Same with our ships. If you have a scout going up against a heavy weapons guy, it, you know, the scout is probably going to die, but if your scout is really good, he or she might have a fighting chance of killing that heavy weapon. So it's going to be challenging, but there's a chance. Same with our game. If you have a really good squid pilot, um, yeah, you could you could just circle strafe the death out of a, a galleon and be okay and maybe win. Yeah, and it's also, like, because it's a very team-based game, like, you're not always just going to be that one 1v1 one squid versus a galleon. Exactly. Um, so a lot of the strategy, like, if you're running a squid, would be like, okay, I'm going to run in and distract the galleon while my buddy the Pyramidian comes in and gets the kill, or, you know, some, some strange strategy like that. Um, so as far as balancing, it's really... The game is balanced as far as player skill like everybody I feel ends up pretty much in the same spot as far as that goes it's it really comes down to coordination and teamwork yeah and um, it is a very big requirement on our end that you do need to coordinate with your team but you know the rewards for doing so I think is far greater than any other teamwork experience that you can find on the market right now so yeah, I mean there's obviously specific concerns from some players, um, whether it's Pyramidian or Spire, and we're always taking a look at the individual ships, and obviously Eric's doing a lot of work. Yes, you mentioned the Pyramidian and the Spire. There are <laughs> few foreseeable changes to those this coming patch. <laughs> yes, yeah, oh. so I sent you. I, I said, I said, I said, I said Eric up for that one, like to make him look good and everything. But I mean, I, I feel like it's not like there are not there are no counters, um, and we. I, I do feel like there's some metas or some weapons that are not necessarily underpowered, but they're underused uh, or underutilized because I don't think that players, I mean, once player found a meta and, you know, that meta spreads, um, I don't think that there's, uh, they, they, like, people have, ex a lot of people have explored everything. So, for example, we're at PAX, um, we're pl playing in, you know, a match with some veteran players. And I took my pyramid and I started ramming against a junker. Um, I'm just make, making a beeline. All the junker did is drop a mine right in front of me as I'm about to approach it. Like, you know, right in front of me to the point where I can't react. And boom, knocked me off my course. I spun around, all my guns disabled, drop another mine, I'm dead. Um, so I, th I, think, I think that there are a lot of unexplored um, 
metas actually to, for example, counter pyramidians. Uh, but I don't think that you know a lot of people have given it um, as much, not necessarily as much thought, but not as much experimentation. All right. Um, so we got a couple of related questions here from Terra Squiddy again and BWC one fifty three. Um, they're both they both have to do with the leveling system in the game. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you guys feel about the current uh, achievement point, like achievements leveling system? Um, well, you know, we from the very beginning were focused on allowing you to play competitive competitively from the very beginning, the first time you log in. So, with that said, everything is unlocked for you. you know, anything that's gameplay changing, skills, ships, guns, etc. You all have that when you log in for the first time. The achievements in your rank and stuff like that, your levels, it's purely cosmetic. It's just a, um, an annotation of how much time you've spent in the game and how much, quote unquote, experience you have in the game. Um, it, it's nice in the fact that, yeah, we do have that ability to play competitively and not worry about unlocking and just really rely on coordination and skill from the very beginning. Um, but, you know, there, of course, the grass is greener on the other side, right? There are always pros and cons to these kinds of decisions. So Yeah, exactly. Um, um, BWC mentions, like, for example, the only way to reliably gain level is to farm the achievements. Um, so it could be difficult when your friends want to level up, but you just, you know, you want to play and actually, you know, try to compete. Um, right. So, yeah, it's a, it, it creates, like, a little bit of a conflict of interest in the player base, um, because, you know, if you want to level, you're not playing to your fullest effect. Um, yeah, and hopefully our, our maps will be a little bit more structured to support the achievements. Um, of course, you know, we listen to feedback all the time. So if there are specific achievements that seem problematic, please let us know. Um, the person who designed all the achievements is not here anymore, so I'm not the expert in them. So again, I need everyone's help in identifying where the problem areas are, and I will look into it. Okay, so, and you can get uh, in contact by sending a email to feedback at Muse Games. Is that right? That's right. All right, there you go. So if you have any feedback about the, uh, you know, anything in the game that you want to share with the devs, uh, feel free to give them a, you know, give them a call, give them an email. Yeah, Captain Phoenix and Gilder, here are your chances. <laughs> oh, we hear about them every day. Totally. <laughs> this is your one and only chance. If you don't send an email <laughs> right now, the devs won't listen to you guys. Oh, I've no. got a stopwatch going. I'll be cutting it off, shutting down the email in five minutes. Uh. Yeah. All right. Uh, will there be a beta for Adventure Mode? Ah, great question. Um, that's sort of what I'm talking to Steam about, is how to set that up and what's the best way to do so. Yeah, I mean, we definitely want people to test as early as possible, as soon as we're ready. Um, how exactly we're going to set up that, that beta structure, I still don't know yet. We could be doing it through, you know, another dev app. We could be doing it through sort of the beta key stuff that we had before. Um, a, a wild idea I had would be to do early access for DLCs, which they have, which Steam has never done before. So I mean, I just posed it as a question, and uh, we'll see, we'll see. But I mean, in any case, we will be able to get people in earlier than releasing the game. Um, I, I just don't know what is the best methodology right now. I'm still waiting to hear back from Steve. Uh, uh, one small point of clarification is that, yes, we're going to do all those things for Adventure Mode, but be, even before that, we're going to be working on and uh, planning to release co-op mode. So, um, you know, if you if you support us on our, you know, gunsofficarus.com slash store, give us money for Adventure Mode, you will get co-op as a part of that season pass. Uh, same with the Kickstarter people. That is, you get the complete package of whatever we, we release until it, uh, Adventure Mode for free as a part of that season pass. So that's just how we had to do it. We're going to do co-op mode first. We're actually actively working on AI-related stuff, and we're going to release a smaller DLC um, before Adventure Mode. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, sure. so yeah. if you could really quickly explain the difference between co-op and Adventure Mode. So, like, what aspects of like the upcoming content is going to be in each. 
Yeah, so um, let's let's talk about everything um, that we have on the table right now. So of course, what everyone is playing is skirmish mode. That is balanced uh, player versus player. So that is the core. Um, that's a core game for all of our future DLC. It is going to be on your airship all the time, working with your mates. 